Yea, the Lord, hallelujah. You are blessed. You are lifted. You are highly favored in the precious name of Jesus. I declare the season, your season of uncommon favor, your season of breakthrough, your season to move from glory to glory. You are moving from level to level. You are moving from failure to success in the precious name of Jesus. You are designed for the top. You will never remain behind in Jesus' name. Welcome to Moment of Empowerment with Benjamin Beckley. And I remain your privileged host, Benjamin Beckley of the Empowerment Center in Arlington, Texas. Moment of Empowerment is a revelational and prophetic broadcast that is designed to empower you towards taking your rightful place in destiny. I want to especially uh, welcome you today. I want to appreciate you. I want to thank God for your life. Thank you so much for tuning into this broadcast today. And I know you shall be greatly blessed of the Lord in the precious name of Jesus. Now, thank you for the calls. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for all your emails. We appreciate them all and uh, we value them. May the Lord continue to bless you. And I want to encourage you to keep watching this broadcast because you shall surely be empowered for the next level in Jesus' name. Now, if you have not requested for the free copy of the prayer CD that I've been giving out for the past couple of weeks, uh, you can call in right now, request for the prayer CD. It's a, there is a full prayer message to, that is um, powered to empower you towards investing and enjoying the blessedness of every day. It's an all-round prayer message from the beginning to the end. It's all prayer. It is fully loaded to position you towards enjoying the blessings of the day. So call the rumba right now on the screen. Uh, place a request for your copy, or you can go to the website, www.worldrevival.org. You will find a link there where you can place a request for the prayer CD. It's absolutely free. We're going to mail it down to you wherever you are in the world, and it will be a blessing to you in Jesus' name. All right. Now, I want you to call somebody right now. Get on the phone. Call a friend. Tell them that Moment of Empowerment is on live right now. Send a message to someone. Tell them the station you are watching me right now. It is time for them to be empowered. It is time for empowerment because God has a word for you today. Now, listen to me. God's word is a result-generating force. God's word is a result-generating force. The word of God is loaded with the capacity to generate result whenever it is connected with revolutionally and obediently. When you follow God's word, you command result in life. Now, in Luke chapter 5, Right from verse 1, the Bible says that Peter was a fisherman. Now, he went fishing, but lo and behold, he caught nothing all through the night. Now, in verse 5 and verse 6, Jesus said to Peter to cast his net for uh, a catch. Now, look at what Peter said. The Bible says, and Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night. In other words, we have put in effort all the night. We have done all we need to do all the night, but we have gotten nothing. We have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Now, verse 6, Bible says, and when they had done this. Now, until you do what God has commanded, then you cannot enjoy what God has provided. Listen to me. You, I want you to get that. Until you do what God has commanded, you cannot enjoy what God has provided. When he had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their nets break. When he followed God's word, result came instantly because God's word is a result generating force. I don't know where you are, where you are listening to me. God's word will locate you today. The word of God will reposition you where you have been feeling before. By the word of God, you will step into your realm of success, unlimited success. 
success that cannot be hindered and resisted. Peter, all through the night, had what I call a wasted effort, wasted time, wasted energy. But when he followed the word of God, when God's words came to him, everything changed around him. Someone is listening to me. God's word is coming your way. It will bring healing to you. Where you have been dejected, rejected, and failing, it will set you up on your feet. It will change your status, change your story. In the precious name of Jesus, every benefit, every package, every goodness in God's word shall be delivered to you today. In the precious name of Jesus, for his shame, he had success. From success to, from shame to success, because he followed God's word. When God spoke, Jesus said, cast down the net. All the fish is gathered together. Man, God's word can locate what you need in order to hand over to you your portion and apportionment in life. In this season, I prophesy, riding on the wings of revelation, that the same way God's word worked for Peter, it's going to work for you. God's word will change your world for better in the name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. I don't know whose word you have been hearing. Somebody is hearing me, listening to me, wherever you are. Somebody has spoken against you. God is about to speak to your favor right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. Now, right before I go into today's teaching, I, I would like to invite you to the Empowerment Center. I, I want you to come. Let's fellowship together. I want you to come. Let's celebrate Jesus together. It doesn't matter where you are. You can be a part of what God is doing for us and through us at the Empowerment Center. The Empowerment Center is a non-denominational life-transforming, multicultural church of God that we care for you, we love you, we, we are dedicated and committed to empowering lives towards fulfilling destiny. That is our assignment, that is our purpose. And testimony abounds all over of what God has been doing at the Empowerment Center. It is time for you, it is your turn to be empowered. I want to see you this Sunday or be a part of any of our services. On Sunday, we have a service from 10 a.m., to 12 noon on Sundays and on Thursdays, we hold services 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. every Thursday. Now, the address is right on the screen. You can be part of what God is doing at the Empowerment Center. I want to see you this Sunday. Be a part of what God is doing. And you can call the number. You can call it right now to if you need direction or if you need more information. You shall be blessed of the Lord in the precious name of Jesus. Now, in case you are just tuning in, this is Moment of Empowerment with Benjamin Beckley. A Moment of Empowerment is a broadcast that is dedicated towards empowering you, towards taking your rightful place in destiny. Now, today, I shall be teaching on what I have entitled, Be Not Afraid, Only Believe. Be Not Afraid, Only Believe. Now, if you have your Bible, open with me to Mark chapter 5 as we look at Revelation from verse 35 to verse 36. Mark chapter 5, verse 35 down to verse 36. Now, the Bible says, While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? Now, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Be not afraid, only believe. Now, listen to me. It takes believing to subdue your fears. It takes believing to subdue your fears. Until you believe, fear will continue to hold you captive. You need to understand that when believing is on vacation or when your belief system or your what you're supposed to believe is on vacation, fear takes over the condition. When belief is not in place, fear takes over your place. Even though what this man has had is strong enough to make him fearful. Jesus said to him, refuse to allow what you have had 
to shift your focus from standing and believing in whom you have come to meet with. Let me say that again. You see, when this man called Jairus heard the word, Bible says they came to him to tell him that your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the master any longer. That is to say it is over for you. That is to say there is nothing that can be done any longer. But Jesus said to him, no, 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 no. Don't listen to what they are saying because when you continue to listen to what you are not supposed to be listening to, you will continue to be missing what you're supposed to be receiving. Come on now. When you keep listening to what you're supposed not to be listening to, you will continue to to hinder yourself and be missing what you continue, what you're supposed to be receiving. That was why Jesus said to him, "Do not, do not be afraid. Don't let what they have said come to your mind. Because when you allow what they have said to trouble your mind, you continue to live in trouble. But believe, only believe. Because if you can believe, things can change. If you can believe, situation can turn around. Look at what Jesus said. Jesus said to him, "Refuse to allow what you have heard." To be your focus point. But rather believe in whom you have come to meet with. I want you to understand that many times in the journey of life, life is always throwing at us issues, circumstances that always want us to live in fear. When he wants us to entertain fear. He wants us to be under the yoke of fear when we should not be. But Jesus is saying the same thing to you. It doesn't matter what the circumstances is that is overwhelming you. Maybe you have got a report. Maybe the doctor just told you something right now. Maybe you just got a mail in the box making you to look as if it is over. Jesus is saying to you wherever you are watching me right now, do not be afraid. Only believe, because if you can believe, things can change. If you can believe, things can work. Do not be afraid, because when you continue to be afraid, you will block what's supposed to take place. When you continue to be afraid, you will block what's supposed to manifest. Jesus said, do not be afraid, only believe, because when you believe, things can change. Things can turn around. Solution can come. Circumstances can turn around. Testimony will manifest in the precious name of Jesus. And to you that is listening to me and watching me right now, wherever you are watching me, whatever is making you to be afraid, whatever is affecting you, I command them to be subdued for you. In the precious name of Jesus, the Lord will delete your fear. The Lord will destroy the issues, creating fear for you right now. In the precious name of Jesus, do not entertain fear. Because when you entertain fear, you lose your ground for victory. That was why Jesus told him, no, 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 no. Do not be afraid. Only believe. Only believe. That is the key. Believe it is the key that unlocks the word of manifestation. I want you to understand. Fear is an attractor of negativity. In Job chapter 3 verse 25. What came to Job was as a result of fear. Look at what Job said. In Job 3.25, Job said, For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me. So fear is an attractor of negativity. The thing I greatly fear, when you fear it, it comes to you. He said, And that which I was afraid of is come unto me. So by the ministry of fear, Job got himself into certain situation that made him to come down. Only believe. Do not be afraid. Now, that word or that statement, be not afraid, only believe, is actually an instruction for solution. It's an instruction for solution. Every time God gives a man a command or an instruction to follow, the reason is thus, it is to put that man in command and to put him in position. Whenever God gives you an instruction to follow or a command to follow, it is to put you in command and to put you in position. Because God's instruction is our highway to our high places in life. God's instruction is what leads you into your position in destiny. We need to consider what led to this instruction. Why did Jesus give this man such an instruction? And we want to consider what eventually happened when he followed this instruction. Now we need to trace it back from the same scripture 
in Mark chapter 5. Now let's go to verse 21. Let's look at it from verse 21 and we will be able to see why he was able, why Jesus told him not to be afraid but rather to believe. Now in case you are just tuning in, uh, this is Moment of Empowerment with Benjamin Beckley and I'm still your privileged host, Benjamin Beckley of the Empowerment Center. Now if you have not requested for the free CD, he was still giving it out. I want you to call the number on the screen right now. Uh, you can go also to the website to request for the free CD that we are still giving out, it will be a blessing to you. It's called Prophetic Daily Prayer. It is packaged and, and loaded to empower you towards taking and enjoying the blessedness of the day. And that is right it on the screen showing to you. Place a request. Just other is absolutely free of charge. It's going to be mailed to you wherever you are in the world. Just request for your copy. You can go to the website on worldrevival.org to place a request for your copy. It will be mailed to you. In the precious name of Jesus. You can also request for a friend. It's absolutely free. Now, we were looking at Jesus saying to Jairus, be not afraid, just believe. And we want to look why did Jesus tell him, why was that instruction given to him? What happened? What happened before now? And what happened eventually when he followed the instruction? Now, look, at, look with me to Mark chapter 5. Verse 21 to verse 24, the Bible says in Mark chapter 5, verse 21, the Bible says, And when Jesus was passed over again by sheep unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was near unto the sea. And behold, there came at one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, my little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed and she shall live. Now verse 24. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. So before we got to the point where Jesus told him, be not afraid, only believe something actually has happened. Number one thing I saw here I want to share with you revelationally was that there was a situation. There was a situation. And this situation was not a favorable situation. This man that was called Jairus just is about losing his little daughter. The Bible says when he came to Jesus, he said, My little daughter is sick and she is at the point of death. Verse 23. So we can discover from here that uh, his little daughter is actually uh, 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 an evidence of hope and future. What's supposed to be generating hope to him, what's supposed to serve as his future, is almost going down. His future is almost being destroyed. The future is under attack. There was a situation. This man was under a very tense, intensive situation that he doesn't even know if he's going to come out from it because the daughter is at, at the point of death. I don't know, maybe you have a situation like this that you are almost at the point of death. Your home is almost been foreclosed. You are almost losing your mind. You are almost losing your marriage. Your future looks as if nothing is going to come out from there. I have a word for you right now. God is coming to your rescue. Jesus is saying to you, be not afraid. Only believe because that situation is going to turn around. Situation is not the end of life. I have discovered their only platform for solution. Don't let the situation make you to give in. Don't give up. There is a way out for you. This was his future. Something is about to destroy his future. Even right in his presence. His child, his daughter was being attacked. That is why the devil is always attacking children. Because he knows they serve as the future. They are indications of hope. They are what brings assurance that something will be done. But this man did not allow the situation to be the end or the final. He did not allow the situation to be the end or the final concerning his life. It doesn't matter what the devil is doing against your children. I speak into the life of your daughter. I command your son to, be, to come out right now. And of God will locate him in the precious name of Jesus. Every child under attack, I command the attack to backfire. I uproot the arrows of the wicked in your life. In the precious name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord. So there was a situation. 
Now, the next thing that happened from that same scripture, which led to Jesus telling him not to be afraid, but to believe, was that the man pursued solution. He did not allow the situation to be the end. He pursued solution. How did I know? In verse 23, the Bible says, and he came, he besought him. So Jairus did not allow the situation to be the final. He looked for solution. I want you to understand he cried for solution because he knew he needed help. He knew, he knew where to go. Solution is the silencing force for the situations of life. Solution is the silencing force for the situation of life. Don't allow situation to pull you down. Run for solution. Call for solution. There is a solution to every situation. The man could have, could have accepted what happened to him as the final, but no, he ran for solution. He went for solution. There is a solution to that problem. Look for solution. And I want to charge you also to look to the right place. He knew the right person to go to. I have come to tell you Jesus is the right way right now. Jesus is the right person to run to. He may be the situation is tough. Many people have died under the yoke of problem because they have kept quiet. He refused to keep quiet. He cried out for help. God is touching somebody at right now to cry out for help. You have just been covering yourself, hiding it, keeping it to yourself. You can't handle it. Help is on on the way for you but cry out for help call for help right now now god has sent me as an agent of rescue to you today call the number on the screen right now for prayer call in for prayer right now because the solution to that situation must come the holy ghost will release it to you the holy ghost will send it your way in the name of jesus call the number on the screen call in for prayers now call in for prayers now because god is going to release solution to the situations of your life solutions will flow from heaven. Solutions will come into you. In the name of Jesus. So he cried out for solution. And that was not the end of his journey. Number three thing I saw here is this, that in his pursuit of solution, he provoked divine attention. How did I know? In verse 24, the Bible says, and Jesus went with him. Jesus had people to attend to, but he went with him. Because he had come, he came with the right mind. He came to the right person. He came at the right time, I believe, as well. Because Jesus was thus returning from a mighty, mighty, marvelous move of God. Then suddenly the Bible says, and this Jesus followed him. Someone is watching me and listening to me. Jesus is following right now. He's giving you attention. I believe that Jesus was settling down to teach the people. But when Jairus came, he cried for solution. And this solution connected him with divine attention. Understand with me today that until you connect with divine attention, the tension of life continue. Until you connect with divine attention, the tension of life will continue. One thing I saw from this text that connected this man to divine attention was in verse 22. The Bible says, and when he came, he fell at his feet. When he came, he fell at his feet, even though he was an honorable man. He was a man of high status in the society. But when he came to Jesus, he did not allow his status to block him. He fell at his feet. I, I'm persuaded he might even be older than Jesus, but that is not the situation. He knew who he has come to meet. He fell at his feet. That is talking about worship. That is talking about submissiveness. That is talking about surrendering. He surrendered to Jesus. Even though he was a ruler of the synagogue, yet he fell at his feet. There are people that have been with Jesus. He did not give any one of them attention. They were just following him and trunking him. But one man came from somewhere. He knew what to do. Oh, 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 oh. When you know what to do, you don't miss getting what you need. When you know what to do, you don't miss getting what you need. He fell at his feet. When he fell at his feet, things dropped from Jesus to follow him. The feet of Jesus was moved to follow him. And the situation did not remain the same. Many cannot stand on their feet in life because they have not learned how to fall at the feet of the master. Until you can learn how to fall at his feet, you may continue to fall and rise. You may continue to fall down. But Jesus is reaching out to you today. I'm challenging and charging you today because Jesus could have just continued his ministration without attending to him or just tell him to go or just pray a simple prayer. But this man got attention. The attention was massive that Jesus followed him. 
Jesus was on his way going to his house. This was because he knew what to do. He fell at his feet. If you can fall at his feet today, if you can come to his feet today, I can tell you something. He will give you attention. And when, you give, when he gives you attention, situation does not remain. When he gives you attention, circumstances must change. When Jesus gives you attention, the tension must be subdued. Fall at his feet by worshiping him. Fall at his feet by humbling yourself. Fall at his feet by being submissive to him. There is someone watching me right now. The Spirit of God is bearing witness that you need to fall at his feet. You need to come give him your own attention so that he can give you his own attention. In James chapter 4 verse 8, the Bible says, Come to God, draw near to him, and he will draw near to you. Until you draw near to him, you may not draw to you what you need from him. Some of you listening, you have been far from God. And he's asking for your attention right now. He's asking for your attention to serve him, to fall at his feet, to humble yourself, to bring yourself down. Pride is a destroyer. He's asking you to come and fall at his feet. Jesus is reaching out to you wherever you're watching me right now. Jesus is reaching out to you wherever you are listening to me right now. It is time for you to come to his feet. If you are saying with me, Pastor, I want to come to his feet. I've just been standing on my feet. I can't stand. I can't withstand it. It's not working. I've come to fall at the feet of the master. I'd like you to pray this prayer with me because I want to pray with you. I want to lead you to his feet because when you fall at his feet, things will fall for you from heaven. Say with me, say, Lord, Father, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. To fall at your feet. I'm sorry for all I have done. Forgive me. Have mercy upon me. I believe in you. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. If you have just prayed that prayer, you are saved and you are blessed of the Lord. In the precious name of Jesus. Now I'm going to continue this teaching in my next broadcast. But remember that do not be afraid. Only believe. Because it is only when you believe that you can enjoy the blessings of God. It is only when you believe that you can see his attention working to your favor. This was said to encourage him and to persuade him not to give up, not to be distracted, but rather to show up and hold on for solution because there is a solution coming your way. God bless you so much. I appreciate you. Now, right before I go today, I'd like to invite you to the Empowerment Center in any of our services this Sunday or Thursday. Come to the Empowerment Center Come and let us connect with grace and glory, and the Lord will surely bless you in the precious name of Jesus. I pray for you. The hand of God will be upon you. You are healed in Jesus' name. Everyone sick, be made whole. Every marriage under turbulence, I command them to be subdued. I step in the name of Jesus. Enter into your liberty. Enter into your place of glory in the name of Jesus. This week will work for you. Enjoy the blessings of the Lord. Till I come your way again next week, stay empowered and keep empowering others. God bless you. Amen.